So we are seeing multiple attacks around the world on our energy grid and on our supply chain, right? And there's a coordinated effort. There are people taking accountability and responsibility even for these attacks. There's certain groups saying that these attacks are good and we want them to happen because they help us. They help our agenda, all right? So people are coming out. This isn't just random. This isn't just, oh, what's happening? People want to shut down the grid and turn off the lights, all right? And people are coming out and taking accountability for it. We are seeing cables cut in Germany and New Mexico, major cables cut. And then we're also seeing stations being attacked and plants being attacked in Florida and France, right? And bonus, California is also getting some hits too, right? So this is spreading. I was saying this before that we are going to see copycats once this North Carolina thing happened where 40,000 people and it was all over the news. It was this huge story and it is a big story, but I knew we were going to have copycats and people trying to replicate this because it's sensational and it's a big deal and it affects everyone and people like to, you know, commit these crimes and then see about it on the news, see on the news, oh, you know, 40,000 people without their, without their power on, they like to hear that right there's people that get off on stuff like that so let's get into this news here lots of big stuff and it's spreading this is happening all over the world too so let's get into what happened in florida here all right so this new report came out of florida from duke energy highlighting all these attacks that have been happening all right and there's also been attacks in france germany and New Mexico that have all been happening right now too that we'll get into too, but let's get into Florida first, right? So, quote, this is not new. Tampa Bay substation break-ins reveal power grid's vulnerability. This is an article from December 9th from Matt Cohen from the Tampa Bay Times. So several Florida substations were burglarized in September according to a Duke Energy report filed to the Department of Energy. The burglars shut off power to homes in Pinellas and Pasco County. I used to live in Pinellas and Pasco County, actually, and Polk County, right? So this, this hits home. This is why I wanted to report on this. After at least one person shot at two substations in North Carolina, leaving thousands without power for a day, a Duke Energy report reveals at least six attacks to substations in Florida, including three in Tampa Bay. Experts are once again calling the vulnerability of our power grid into question. All right, so three in Tampa Bay. That's a lot. And Tampa Bay is a big area. A lot of people move there. A lot of people live there. Only a chain link fence occasionally with barbed wire guards many of the substations powering the homes in Tampa Bay. A University of Florida professor said these attacks show it isn't enough. All right, so the barbed wire fence isn't enough. At least six sub substations across Florida were victims of break-ins, according to a Duke Energy report filed to the Department of Energy to paint, obtained by News Nation, three of them in the Tampa Bay area. All right. News Nation reports that a memo it acquires says that federal law enforcement officers believe those breaking in had, quote, inside knowledge of the facilities, and they are breaking in and turning off the power in Pinellas, Polk, in Pasco counties, this has been happening. And I've brought up this point before too, how do these people know exactly where to hit these substations when they're firing at them? How do they know exactly what to hit, exactly what points? They are aiming and hitting specific targets and they can't just be firing off, you know, a dozen rounds, a couple of people are gonna notice, people are gonna be like, what's all that commotion over there near the power plant? This was probably calculated, this was probably one or two rounds, a few rounds, in very specific areas to knock out certain things. And federal law enforcement is investigating this and even saying that they had, quote, inside knowledge of the facilities that have gotten hit. An attack on infrastructure can only, or can come in physical form, such as a recent substation burglaries around Tampa Bay or a cyber attack. They brought up in February, 2021, hackers got into an Oldsmar water treatment plant system and drastically increase the amount of sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, used to treat the city's water. I used to live in Oldsmar, not at this time, a long time ago. But when I heard this story, it was shocking that somebody could hack into the system 
and raise the levels and make the water toxic right lye could blind you lye is very toxic sodium hydroxide is very toxic and somebody was trying to hurt someone right and these were all recently they were saying uh this they put out this report in september but it's just now being reported out of the tampa bay times all right so north carolina south carolina washington oregon florida all these places are getting hit new mexico they're all getting hit let's get into what's happening in france as well because there's also attacks going on there and this could give us a key into who is maybe doing these attacks as well so environmentalists attack one of french cement giants lafarge's factories and this is a group that was taking credit for these attacks so we are seeing groups commit these attacks and come out and saying yes this was us is this who is committing these other attacks it could be things like vandalism it could be thieves it could be uh, just disruptors people just trying to cause trouble but we are seeing coordinated attacks now specifically in france and environmentalist groups are coming out and taking credit for this attack on this cement plant right so the attack took place on saturday at an industrial plant belonging to the french cement giant lafarge and bouc belair a small community located just north of the city of marseilles marseille how do you say that all right i'm not french various sources claim anywhere between 100 and 200 eco extremists stormed the industrial facility within 15 minutes the mob smashed offices and workshops set construction machinery on fire and severed electrical cables broadcast broadcaster bf mtv reports on sunday lafarge released a statement saying the extremists had caused quote very significant damage to facilities buildings and vehicles and labeled the attack as a quote unprecedented violence all right so this is true why are these groups allowed to attack and far left groups are even saying i didn't want to put the names up or anything i don't want to promote any of these groups but a far left french website took credit for the attack claiming that the industrial plant is one of quote the biggest polluters and producers of co2 in the country all right so that was their justification for attacking the cement plant is saying that it produces a massive amount of co2 see there's a coordinated agenda here and we're we're going to see it on the ground and policy wise there's a policy agenda to shut down all of the power plants all of the co2 all of the electricity all right biden just proposed eight billion dollars to give to south africa for them to get rid of all their coal power plants all right they're also they also have a similar agenda in the united states but this just happened just this week just in the past few days proposed eight billion dollars to south africa for them to decarbonize and to get rid of all of their carbon power plants all right all their coal power plants and this is a coordinated agenda on the policy level on global macro level but also on a micro level there are people that really are bought into this that think you know things are gonna like the planet's gonna collapse if we don't do something about this right away and it's a it's a it's a real feeling right stuff stuff's going on there are problems going on but the anger the angst the anxiety is being redirected at the wrong things and they're just accelerating the collapse even more by trying to shut down industrialized civilization all right so we are seeing this all over the globe france florida germany uh, new mexico california we're seeing saboteurs attack the grid so let's get into what's happening in france and then we will get into what's happening in new mexico and california as well i mean what's happening in germany and then new mexico and california as well so german railway cables cut again again this just happened this week these cables were cut for the railway and it disrupted uh, rail transportation for hours and hours until they could replace this cable all right who's targeting our infrastructure like this this group out of france came out and took took credit for it all right 
and they just ran up in the cement plant and just started causing chaos. And have there been any arrests? Have there been any consequences for this? I haven't seen it. I'll let you know, but I doubt it. All right, German railway cables cut again. What's going on, All right? And this is just one of these things where they could, they could do it, right? They could just turn the lights off. They could switch the power off. 40,000 people in North Carolina had their power cut off, all right? And it was all over the news and it was broadcast. It's just like when there's these other tragedies, we have copycats broadcast all over the news, all right? I report it to you guys because you guys want to stay on top of things and stay prepared. But this got out to the general public and people saw and they want to replicate this. They want to have infamy as well. And they're looking for any way that they can cause disruption. German security services are investigating after unknown attackers cut cables belonging to the public railway in what is seen as a second act of sabotage against Deutsche Bahn in as, in as many as months. The line, which only carried goods trains, had been closed for a few hours after the attack in the western city of Essen on Sunday, a Deutsche Bahn spokesperson said, confirming the report in Der Spiegel. In October, fiber optic cables were cut in two places in what authorities said was an act of sabotage. So this already happened in October as well. That's why they're saying cables were cut again. And those were fiber optic cables. And these are now railway cables, all right? All of this infrastructure is vulnerable. And it's not fortified infrastructure if it's vulnerable to even just everyday people. It's not even like this is a massive cyber attack. This is some sophisticated, coordinated event. This could just be some person that's having a bad day and they want to cause some trouble and they can just go cut these cables and cause disruption in the supply chain and for your lights turning off for anything, all right? And police later said they had not excluded the possibility of a political motive, that the, there was no sign of foreign state involvement. It led to a three-hour halt to all rail traffic in northern Germany, all right? So this is sabotage. They're saying it's sabotage, and it keeps escalating, and we're seeing more events all over the world and over the country. So let's dive into what's going on in New Mexico as well. This is a very interesting story very suspicious honestly i feel like this story has more to it and they are trying to have people not panic because the excuse for what happened does not make sense so let's dive into what happened in new mexico and by the way hit that thumbs up hit that sub have you heard of any of these stories have you heard of this new mexico story if you haven't heard it hit that thumbs up there all right leave a comment let me know what you think about this what are you doing to get prepared do you think what do you think do you, do you think this is sabotage or is it just like freak accidents, things happen? Maybe the cable just snapped, but they're saying it was cut. You can tell when a cable is cut versus when it's, you know, frayed and snapped. Okay, there's a difference. What do you think's going on? And who do you think's doing it? Let me know what you think down below. Let's get into the story here and let me know, did you hear about this? And I, I didn't hear about this until today when I was researching this topic. So, severed fiber optic cable north of Santa Fe causes disruption of cellular and internet service locally. All right, this was reported on December 12th, 2022, and I believe it happened a few days before this report was put out. Shout out to Mary O'Neill in New Mexico. I used to live right near the border of New Mexico. I used to go into New Mexico all the time. I used to go to Capulan Volcano, if you've ever been there smash that like button all right beautiful volcano it's a it's a volcano that you can go up to the top of Capulan volcano it's a national monument in new mexico so a severed fiber optic cable north of santa fe saturday caused a massive impact to cellular and internet services to los alamos county and other locations in the area as well as los alamos national laboratory lanl officials advise employees Sunday morning that an estimated timeline for service restoration was not known. All right, so a severed cable. And this this story is so suspicious 
um, stick with me here on what their excuse was for it. It really is doesn't make sense to me. So LANL officials told staff Monday morning that services had been restored and their crews are continuing to monitor the situation and that updates will be provided if the situation changes. Los Alamos Police Department Chief Oliver Morris told the reporter that the internet outage did not affect LAPD's radios but did affect the NCIC connection that allows departments to run wanted persons and vehicles. Quote, however, we were able to run NCIC using our law enforcement partners in Española. Local 911 lines were functioning, but the issue was that not everyone had cell service. Landline were, lands, landlines were functional. Quote, we discussed using a code red alert, but it would not have been able to have been pushed out to everyone due to the cell towers being affected. All right. So this even knocked out the cell towers in this local area. Right. And they the police wanted to send out a code red alert for communications being down, but they couldn't even send out the alert because the cell phones didn't work. You know, you get these alerts on your phones like Amber Alert or whatever. There's a whatever, some kind of emergency. You get them randomly on your phone and they're location based normally. It's like, oh, in this area, somebody's hurt or missing or along those lines. And they were trying to send out a code red alert. We were we discussed issuing a code red alert, but it would not have been able to been pushed out. So even if there is an emergency, it's one of these things you you might not even know what's happening, especially when something big happens, an EMP, a mass communications blackout, we aren't gonna know, all right? You might have to rely on a radio. It's good to have a weather radio, a battery powered weather radio old school that you can tune into the radio because that might be the only signal that you could tap into right the cell towers might be down might be the only thing left is radio after who knows right and the police were even saying they wanted to issue this alert and they were not able to so stay prepared we really can't it's good to have emergency services but you can't rely on them you know you really can't rely on them and especially in a time of an emergency because they're going to be overwhelmed and they're not going to be able to help everyone, especially if you are rural. It's going to be harder to get to you. And if communications are down, they can't even send you alerts to tell you something's wrong, right? So, and this is the suspicious part of all of it, right? This is why it's like, what's going on? This seems like sabotage to me, right? These last this last slide here so initially only one cut of a fiber cable was reported but later los alamos national laboratory internal reports indicated that there were two cuts an unofficial lumen report received by the reporter indicates the following all right so they said there was two different cuts on the line too so it's all it's almost like guaranteed it was sabotage at this rate, repair teams advised that the splice cases were full of mud and water, which impeded the isolation efforts, and the OSPE suspected that multiple fault locations were present. The first fiber fault was isolated, and teams began efforts to complete repairs as another team dispatched to traverse the span and isolate the secondary failure. Um, you know, long story short here, they fixed the second one, and they came to the conclusion that operations advised that a rodent chew was affecting the cable. All right, the team began repair efforts on the cable at 9.35. General Mountain Time associated alarms cleared and services restored to a cable station, to a stable condition. So they were saying that they think this came from a rodent chew on the cable lines, all right? And that could be, but if we read up here, I mean, they were saying that they fixed the first fault and they had to send a team to the second, um, to the secondary failure, right? And they had to travel to it. So it's not even like it was right next to it. It seems like they had to travel a distance to it to find the secondary failure in the cable. So was this, was this just a rat? Either way, even if it was a rat, it's kind of pathetic that our 
critical infrastructure can be taken down by a little rodent, a little rat, all right? And bad enough that the police cannot send out red alerts and communication alerts to the general public. So let me know what you think about this story. We, we got one more story here for California getting hit as, as well too. But let me know what you think about this story. This story was very suspicious to me, kind of fishy that a rat did it. And they're saying there was two failures in the line, but it was rodent. I was thinking maybe somebody just like was smashing them with a shovel or something like that because they were saying the holes were filled with mud and um, you know, not very, not very clear. So maybe somebody was just smashing them with a shovel, right? Intentionally or unintentionally, but the fact that it's two failure points in the cable just points to that it was probably intentional, right? This happened at the same time. It's it's very rare for this to happen. Two rats, two different places chewing on the cable at the same time, maybe, but it's probably one in a trillion that that happens. So let's get into what happened in California as well. EV charging station cables cut, stolen from Roding Park. All right, so this this is just another form of sabotage and it's not as it's not a, as critical okay it's important for some people to have electric vehicles it's not going to affect everybody but it just goes to show how vulnerable the grid is we're setting up all these new charging stations we have this grid already built around us and people can just come and cut these cables yank these cables out and they're saying that they're very expensive as well so the cables on the EV charging stations at Roding Park in central Fresno have been cut and stolen. It appears that somebody has cut seven out of the 10 of the large connector wires on the charging stations and taken them. So at least they left three. They left three. They weren't too greedy. At least they left three of the cables. There you go. You still charge your car. You're good to go. All right. It's fine. The large cables, uh, obviously sarcasm. The large cables are very expensive pieces of equipment thus far. 45 charging stations have been vandalized this year, according to a city official, because these cables are expensive. A total of 36 repair kits had to be bought, costing around $62,000, and they expect to receive more due to its needs. The city is considering various ways to help decrease these incidents, like building steel cabinets and possibly locking them at night. Another thought is retractable cords are having customers bring their own while increasing security in the area. So just bring your own cord, uh, you know, bring your own uh, gas line. This is just nuts that this is happening. Imagine if people are yanking off gas lines at gas stations. I, I know they're not as valuable, but it's just crazy. That's another thing people could do to devastate gas stations, right? You just yank the freaking pumps off, right? Cause a massive spill. Obviously, that's illegal. I don't want anyone to do that. I'm just pointing out how vulnerable our grid is to these types of situations so get prepared now guys get a generator get solar get it all right it's best to have both it's best to have gas powered and solar for your house in case anything happens if there's a dim day if it's snowing for days if it's overcast for days raining for days you got the you got the gas generator to charge your batteries up right and then you have the solar for supplemental to keep you going so have both get prepared guys winter's coming and they are looking we could see a sabotage like this anywhere in the country and we are seeing test runs these are dry ones dry runs right now to see how the public reacts and to see what they can get away with who's who's going to get caught who's not how far they can push it without anyone getting the finger pointed at them directly all right, so let me know what you think about this. What are you doing to get prepared for blackouts? I know I've been talking about it a bunch, but winter's coming. I got this big coat on, guys. It's freaking freezing out. Even in this room, it's freezing, all right? So get your stuff now, guys. Get prepared now, and make sure you have a big old blessed day. Thank you.